All right, welcome to the show, everyone. My guest today is James Swanick. He's the co-founder of Swanick Sleep, which is a sleep brand that helps people look good, feel great, and sleep better. He's also the founder of 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge, which teaches social drinkers how to quit booze for 30 days. James originally had a successful career as a print, TV, and radio journalist. At one point, he was a Hollywood entertainment correspondent, where he interviewed Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, George Clooney, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and many more A-list celebrities. He was also the host for SportsCenter on ESPN. In 2015, he had an idea for a physical product business and founded Swanick Sleep with his brother Tristan and grew it from zero to one million plus dollars in sales within the first 12 months. I want to bring James on the show to find out how he launched Swanick Sleep, how he grew it so quickly, and what his plans for the business are now. So, James, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Great to be here. Awesome. I just wanted to start quickly, just a little bit of your background, because you had this successful career as a, as a journalist in varying capacities. So, I was just curious why you decided to, to quit that successful career and pursue entrepreneurship. Was it just an itch you already always had, or was there some other reason? Well, I was always someone who had a job, and having a job was fine and fun and great for one phase of my life but it got to a point where i wanted to have total freedom to make my own choices and so having a job meant that someone else was telling me where i had to be and when and was also telling me how much i was worth in terms of you know a salary um and so for me what i really valued in life um was freedom and that means you know being able to travel where whenever i want however I want, live wherever I want, whenever I want, and never having to be beholden to anyone or anything. So really, it was a lifestyle choice for me, I think, and just a a mindset choice, which is, even though I'm in this great job and I have this great career, uh, I want something different. It was pretty scary to, to, to quit a job and to not have money come through and have that security. But ultimately, for me, it was, I want to just be free to do whatever I want, whenever I want. And that was why I made the choice to go into entrepreneurship. Mm, I love it. And that's, that seems to be a common theme that, that yearning for freedom among a lot of entrepreneurs, especially in the online entrepreneur world. So I love that. So early 2015, you were, you were in Sydney, Australia, visiting some friends and family and you were running from Bondi Beach to Bronte Beach, and you had an idea for a business. So could you maybe just tell that story of what happened there? Well, I was listening to a podcast. There was a guy called Ryan Daniel Moran who had a, a podcast at the time called Freedom Fast Lane, and he had an episode which was named, if I recall correctly, How to Make a Million Dollars in a Year on Amazon. And so I was in Sydney at the time. I went for a run, and I was listening to this this podcast episode, and I thought, you know what? I got this idea that I had in my mind for a month or two about a pair of stylish blue light blocking glasses. And while I was listening to this episode, I thought, why don't I just do this? Like, why don't I just take action and literally create this product and try to sell it on, on Amazon? So by the time I got back to, to, to Bondi Beach, and I'd finished that run, I was thinking, you know what, I'm just going to do this. And so I phoned up my youngest brother, Tristan, and I said, I got this idea. Why don't you look into it, do the research, um, you know, in terms of sourcing it from China or a manufacturer, and I'll do most of the marketing behind it, and we can partner up. And um, he said yes, and that's how it really began. We just started the business from there. So it was a combination of having an idea, but then also listening to a podcast episode of someone who'd already you know, successfully sold a million dollars on Amazon in a year and that giving me enough kind of support or confidence, if you like, to just go, you know what, I'm going to take action. Let's go. Mm. Yeah. So key to have that, I guess, reference of success of someone who's actually done it before and and you can think, well, if, if they can do it, so can I. So I love that. And could you maybe just explain for the people listening, what are the, the, the blue light blocking glasses? Why are they important? And, and what was actually the problem with everything else that was on the market at that stage? Yeah, well, so we produce a pair of blue light blocking glasses affectionately known as Swannies from my sleep company, Sw- company Swanwick Sleep. So blue light blocking glasses are essentially a pair of glasses that have an orange lens 
and the orange lens blocks out artificial blue light. Now, the, why do we wear these glasses? Well, for a number of reasons, but ultimately we're wanting to block artificial blue light. We don't want to stare into that artificial blue light, um, particularly at night time, because at night time, when we stare into that light from our screens, for example, our iPhone or computer screen or TV screen, what it does is that it tricks our body and brain into thinking that it's daytime. And when our body and brain thinks that it's daytime, we don't produce as much melatonin, which means we don't sleep as well. So if you stay up late at night watching Game of Thrones on your phone or your Facebook or Instagram or you're searching for football scores or whatever it is, and you're not protecting your eyes from that artificial blue light at nighttime, you're compromising your sleep quality. And if you don't sleep well, you're tired, lethargic, you make poor dietary choices, you're irritable, you just don't perform the way that nature intended you to perform. So the purpose of wearing these blue light blocking glasses with the orange lens is to block that light. You can carry on watching TV, playing video games, doing whatever it is that you do, but blocking that artificial blue, blue light so you therefore are able to get a great night's sleep. Um, so the problem, the problem um, before I started my blue light blocking glasses company was that all the blue light blocking glasses on the market were ugly. In fact, if you put them on, you looked like a meth chemist or you looked like a nerd or a geek or something. And so what I did is I just decided to create a stylish pair of blue light blocking glasses because I'm just vain enough that I want to look good as I wear, as I protect my, my eyes. So I kind of came up with a product which is where health meets style or where style meets health. And hence, that's why the stylish pair of blue light blocking glasses known as Swannies from Swan Week Sleep were, were born. Mm, I love it. I think that's a key point as well. It's you didn't revolutionarily invent something brand new. It was something that already existed. Blue light blocking glasses existed, as you said. You just took that original design and made it stylish. You made it a bit bit better. So I think that's a, a key point for, for other people as well to take away. You don't have to always reinvent the wheel. Just take something that exists and put your own touch and improvement on it, which I love. So... You grew really fast with this business. You grew to from basically well from zero from nothing to over a million dollars in sales in less than a year, which is amazing growth. So, what do you attribute that initial growth for? Was there any particular things you did to market the product initially, or sort of tactics you used? How what would you attribute that growth to? Well, the best advice I can give to anyone who's wanting to get as much sales as straight out of the gate as possible is do anything you can. I mean, that's the simple answer. And the anything that we could when we did it was I made sure I was a guest on other people's podcasts. I posted it on my Facebook. I, br I begged friends and family to buy the product and leave a review. Sometimes I, I asked people to buy the product and I said that I'd reimburse them just so the Amazon algorithm could see that there were actual sales taking place. So some people would buy the, the glasses and leave a review and then they'd send me the receipt and then I'd literally send them, pay them the money back. So, you know, obviously that cost me financially, but what it got me was reviews right away and it got me um, the al Amazon algorithm seeing that sales were made and because Amazon's algorithm saw that sales were made, it promoted the glasses in the Amazon workplace. And so more people were able to see the, the glasses and then buy the glasses and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so, uh, you know, right at the beginning, it was begging friends, begging families, trying to get on, on podcast episodes, posting on my Facebook, posting on Instagram, trying to generate some press, trying to get newspapers or magazines to write articles about it. I mean, just doing anything, everything possible. Um, and so we did do that and it was a slog to be honest. And then you know, we had a bit of a breakthrough. The first big breakthrough was I was I was interviewed on a, on Bulletproof Radio, which is a podcast by Dave Asprey, um, and his audience really resonated with the idea of our glasses. And um, you know, we started selling a lot of glasses in a few days as a result of that episode, and that really you know fueled the Amazon algorithm even even more. And then it's kind of the product kind of took a took on a life of its own from there. Mm. Yeah, that's great. As a key point as well, that 
you can have a great product. And even though Swannies is an awesome product, like I've, I've got them myself, I use them every night to, to help me sleep better and they work well. But having just a great product isn't enough. You've got to also sell it well, which I think um, you did an amazing job with. Did your journalism background help a lot with with marketing the product initially? Because it sounds like you were like hustling a lot to get on podcasts and getting as much media as possible. Those sort of skills you learned from your journalism background? Yeah, so journalism certainly helped me craft a, craft a newsworthy pitch. You know, if I'm going out to media and press, I, I kind of know what they're interested in. And so I know how to approach a journalist and pitch a story idea. So that certainly helped. And then I think the other thing that helped from my journalism background was doing things now. So every day I had a daily deadline in order to get people to talk to me, write a story, have it published in the paper the next day. So rather than saying, oh, let's generate some press next week, it's like, how about we generate some press right now in this minute, in this hour, like right now. And so certainly those skills helped me. Um, you know, generate press of my own and speak to journalists in a way or, or podcast hosts in a way that inspired them to want to interview me. Mm-hmm. Makes total sense. So another thing I wanted to talk about and that I was curious about was the importance of mentors and how mentorship helped you in the, in the initial stages of this business because you were actually personally mentored by Ty Lopez who, for people listening, if they don't know who he is, they can just Google here in my garage to, to see the, the thing he's most famous for. He was, um, he was a very successful online marketer. And you also went on to become his top salesperson. So I was wondering if you could just tell the story of how that experience came about working for Ty and how that mentorship helped you in your business. Well, I was in a business mastermind uh, at the time, and I would encourage anyone to, to join masterminds because the people you meet there can fundamentally, you know, help you in your business. Um, you meet great, you make great contacts, you make, you make allies. People have, you know, because of those connections have met their future wives or husbands. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just a wonderful group of people to be in. And so at the time, which was 2013, I was in a business mastermind group, which Ty Lopez was a part of. And um, I was in L.A. for a time and I just reached out to him and said, hey, do you want to meet up? And he said, sure, come over to my place. So I went up to his house in the Hollywood Hills and we met and then we played some basketball in his in his backyard and just kind of got to know one another on a social level. And then, um, you know, some months later, he invited me to his home for a business, an official business mastermind. And I went along and there he he pitched a an 18 month mentorship. Um, uh, and I decided then in that spot that Ty knew a lot more about business than I did. And so I, I said, yeah, I'll do it. And then I ended up investing the money with him and, and, you know, I paid him to mentor me and coach me for, for a time, which he did. And, and then that transitioned into me becoming one of his salespeople and then ultimately his top salesperson. And then through that, uh, relationship, you know, I've learned a lot about online marketing and learned a lot about um, business and entrepreneurship and uh, made lots of great friends and made lots of contacts. And it's just been a, you know, a great relationship from start to finish. Mm, that's cool. And to clarify as well, it's that wasn't something that wasn't just like a $500 investment, was it? It was it was quite a substantial amount of money for you at the time, I believe. Yeah, well, it was twenty five thousand uh, American uh, dollars at the time, which is about thirty two thousand Australian dollars in, in with the exchange rate, and that hurt because it was a lot of money, and I didn't really have that huge amount of money lying around, and and, and I sold property in Australia in order to generate the funds, but I did it, and I thought it as a long term. I, th- I saw looked upon it as a long term financial investment. Mm. So, um, How? so. I guess I was curious how you were able to, because a lot of people are not even willing to invest a hundred dollars in themselves, let alone thirty thousand dollars. You know, so what was it about? What gave you the confidence, I guess, to to go ahead, especially considering you had to even sell property to to get the cash to do that? That's a lot of people wouldn't invest themselves to that amount. So, was there any particular reason you think that you were able to to do that, or 
be willing to invest in yourself to that extent? Well, I wasn't confident. Um, I was just brave, I think, at the time. And not a brave as in, like, give myself a pat on the back. But I was just, I, I guess, I mean, I guess I was, I showed courage. And again, not to give myself a pat on the back, because what is courage? Courage is simply feeling the fear and taking action anyway. And so for me, it was like I felt the fear. So I wasn't confident. I didn't have confidence, but I was willing to take the risk. Um, and, you know, the, 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 I think the risk of not taking action was far, far bigger than the risk of taking action. Because if I didn't mm -hmm. take action, I, I was just going to be in the same spot. And so, yeah. I, sure, I had 32 three thousand Australian dollars to lose, but I probably had a lot more than that to lose by not do, not taking any action. So, yeah. um, in the end, it was like, well, I can just I can always do what I've always done, and I'll always get what I've always got, or I can try something different. And so I was willing to try something different, and you know, thankfully o over time it it paid off. Yeah, that's awesome, and it's a good point as well that. You've got to look at that long-term trajectory, which I think a lot of people struggle to see. But yeah, you obviously saw from interacting with him socially and some of the other masterminds you're in that he was knowledgeable. He knew what he was talking about. So I guess that would give you some confidence. But then you were able to kind of project long-term that, yeah, okay, even if I lose this money, then it's still worth the risk for the potential reward. And I'm glad it paid off. So that's great. So... What's, what are some specific things that you actually learnt from, from Ty in that, that period? Was it a lot of, I guess, because you were, you were from a journalism background, so obviously some skills, trans, a lot of skills do transfer to business, but um, there's a lot of things that, that you needed to learn. So was it a lot of just, I guess, the mechanics of marketing online and stuff like that, or was there a lot of mindset things that he taught you? Were there any specific things you can think of? Um, well, I mean, mostly it was online marketing. Um, well, look, from a holistic level, it was, um, I learned from him that you can create very successful businesses from just helping people and all of the best businesses are from helping people. So rather than creating like Coca-Cola, which is full of sugar and hurts people or video games or whatever, which is just mindless, you know, entertainment, I guess. Something that significantly can really, you know, make someone's life be, be better. And so my first real business was the 30-day no alcohol challenge, which helped people quit drinking for 30 days. And, you know, learning from Ty that I could even do that, like I could help people quit drinking. Oh, how can I monetize that? Well, now I can. Now people pay me thousands of dollars in order to quit drinking. I have a program called Project 90, which helps entrepreneurs and business owners quit drinking. People invest $7,500 with me to do that. I never would have thought that, that was possible when I before I joined Ty, but but working with Ty, he showed me that it definitely was possible. Um, and then more than that, it was the ability to be able to read a book a day. So Ty always reads a book in a day, um, in like an hour or so, in speed reading. He taught me that skill, and so I learned how to read a book a day. And so that really, uh, you know, implanted a hell of a lot of knowledge into my brain. Uh, and then after that, it was online marketing funnels. You know, how to market, how to inspire people to take action, how to encourage people to pull out a credit card and, and buy something of value from you, um, and then sales techniques, and then building a program techniques, and then um, upsell techniques, and lifetime value techniques, and all kinds of things that, that are you know very specific to the online marketing world, or marketing in general. So I guess you say I got, an ed I got a, a great lesson in the importance of knowledge um, from reading a book a day, and surrounding yourself with amazing people, making sure that you're surrounded by people who are 10 years more advanced than you, um, and then a lot of you know very specific marketing uh, advice as well. Mm. That's great. Would have been a great experience. So, what's next for you for, in terms of Swanick Sleep? What's what's your vision for for that company? Is there any long-term goals for that, or what's what's next for for that particular business? Well, we're expanding our product line. We're now helping people sleep better through different products like uh, mattresses. So we have the world's healthiest uh, organic mattress called Be um, uh, Organic Nights by Swanick. 
Um, and we have other sleep products such as sleep eye masks and, and sleep pills. When I say pills, I mean uh, all natural <laughs> supplements, um, not prescription drugs, obviously. And um, yeah, so the idea is just to continue to grow that that business and to expand the product line and to continue continue growing. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And your other project that you mentioned, 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge, you seem to be actively growing that. Um, you're putting out a lot of good content around that, educating people about about alcohol consumption. And and it sounds like you've sort of found your, your niche in terms of uh, helping entrepreneurs improve their productivity by reducing alcohol, which I think there's a good video you posted up of talking about the opportunity cost of of alcohol um, for some entrepreneurs where you're not just trading time for, for money, there's there's the opportunity cost of lost income um, that comes from that. So I thought that was really insightful. So is that a pretty big project for you at the moment, the 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge? Um, it is. Helping people quit alcohol is, is a huge project. Um, specifically, I've, I've created a program called Project 90 and that helps entrepreneurs, business owners, and professionals quit drinking for at least 90 days and beyond. Uh, and that's um, a higher ticket program. So people are investing $7,500 to do that with me because they know that if they can sort out the alcohol, that they'll be able to um, you know, make tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars more in their business because they've nipped that problem in the bud. So... While my overall goal is to help anyone who wants to quit alcohol quit alcohol, more specifically, my um, most current project is Project 90, which is helping business owners and entrepreneurs and, and professionals and executives quit alcohol. Mm, I love it. Yeah, it's an important message, so I love that. Well, I want to be mindful of your time, James. So I think you've, even in this short amount of time, you've dropped heaps of, of value and knowledge for the, for the listener here. So uh, just last two questions. First is, is there anything I haven't asked you or anything you want to make sure that you, you do pass on to the audience before we finish up here? I would just say, um, if you're thinking of doing something, then take then just do it and do it now. Um, there's no time better than, than, than the present. Because um, if you wait, then you procrastinate and just, you know, life just becomes a whole series of, of broken dreams. So take action and do it, just do it and do it now. Love it. That's a great message. And last question is just what's the best way for people to connect with you, James, if they want to check out the stuff you're working on? What's the best way? Uh, yeah, um, you can find me on Instagram at, at James Swanwick. 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge is at 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com. Um, jameswanwick.com J-A-M-E-S-S-W-A-N-W-I-C-K you can find me there as well and uh, if you're interested in sleep then uh, you can just rock a pair of Swannies blue light blocking glasses you can go over to swanwicksleep.com or you can just type in Swannies on Amazon awesome well everyone listening make sure you go check out James's stuff he creates some really great products that are going to help you They improve your productivity improve your sleep improve your health I've got my Swannies that I wear every night. They really do. It's the kind of thing when I first heard of it, I thought it was a bit of a gimmick, but when you actually try it, you realize it does actually help you sleep a lot better and deeper. So get one of them. And yeah, thanks so much, James, for coming on the show today. I really appreciate your time. Of course, James. Thanks so much for having me.